If you're lying to me, I will kill you. It comes at night. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. So, It Comes at Night is directed by Trey Edward Schultz. Uh, the only film he's ever done before this was Krisha and also the Krisha short, and I haven't seen any of those. So, this is his first real feature. And this also stars Joel Edgerton. He's been in a lot of things like God's uh, Exodus, Gods and Kings. The GIF, Warrior, and also a few other movies that I'm sure you've ever heard of. And what In Comes at Night is about is this family in this remote, desolate location in the woods in their home, and it's boarded up. And they're just trying to survive uh, from what exactly? You don't know. You don't know if there's some virus running around. You don't know if there's some mysterious creature lurking in the woods that are devouring everyone you don't know if it's a combination of both it's just a tight-knit family and they're trying to survive and also find out what the hell is going on and a great thing about the way this film started is it just kind of just throws you in the middle of this environment and you don't know what's going on you just see these people doing these regular routines every day and they're real peculiar with it too and you're like okay why are they doing this why does this man look like this why are they you know wearing masks why do they have so many guns why is there a gas tank over here i mean why 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 and slowly and slowly and slowly without the film just shoving expedition in your face down your throat it just lets you, it just the film is just quiet and you're seeing all these characters going around going about their day and you have to put the pieces together yourself and i i really did like that it challenges you as an audience member not to just be force fed and actually use your brain in a quiet setting as you're watching the movie now there's a lot of great technical things the director did here especially with the lighting that's probably the best thing that i liked about this and before i jump into that i, I just want to set it up for you real quick um they have a the t family has a, a set number of rules they have one way into the house and one way out and the one way in and out is guarded by a red door and that rule, rule number one is no matter what always keep the red door locked no matter what i mean simple rule here now the trailers in this uh, the trailers for this movie you know hyped it up bigger than what it actually was in the movie but i'm not going to say that it's not a big deal because it is and another rule that they have is you know if if at all best do not go outside at night because you just don't know what's going to happen to you but i'm not spoiling it for you here sometimes the characters do have to go outside at night and what the director did with the lighting in these particular scenes, I thought was freaking amazing because there's really no artificial light. If there's a character walking around outside in complete darkness with a lantern, that is the only light that is making up the whole entire scene. If the character has like a flashlight, that's the only light that's making up the scene. There's, there's, there's nothing else. Like, you know, if he's looking down, he can't see his wrist because the light is at the end of the, you know, the bulb going this way. So the way they limited your vision right there just made it really uh, more intense. It, it already felt creepy and you're kind of just like, oh my gosh, what's about to happen? Is something about to jump out? And I'll say no, because this movie does not have a lot of jump scares and cheap thrills like that. But it does have jump noises to where all of a sudden things will just be, I mean, it'll, things will just be quiet. And then all of a sudden, just this loud noise will come out of nowhere. And the, the scene will switch real quick to some graphic feature. And you're kind of just like, oh, what the hell? Sometimes I was so scared that I didn't move at all. I just was like stuck at the screen because I was just like, okay, crap. You know, what the hell is that? But I mean, you may not react that way. I am probably will because, you know, I'm a scary cat. As far as all the characters are concerned, um, you know, they did pick a number of, uh, you know, a, a good group of characters. Uh, there's this one married couple and there's not so many couples in the movie at all. But, you know, I was really just curious to know what the origin is. It doesn't make a big deal, but at the same time, I wanted to know how they met and, you know, who was the biological father here and there and what was the, you know, relationship. You know, I like that. Characters are using their brain, you know, you're following them. 
you know, you know, you just you're you're excited to find out what's going on. But a knock on the film is sometime when the film revs you up where they you, you think they're going to reveal some information. There's nothing there. And then you're just going on to the next day and then you have to do that again. So, I mean, while it's entertaining, it's like, oh, you know, it, you know, like each day you, you think that you're going to get a prize at the end of the day, but you don't get a prize. You fall asleep and you wake up and you're like, oh, well, we have to do all that over again. You know, maybe I'll get a prize at the end of the day, but then it never comes. And does it come at the end? Well, it does, but that's what ruined the film for me. I was enjoying this film throughout the whole time for the most part, but at the end, um, it just kind of crashed, crumbled, and blew up in my face and just made a complete mess to where I was actually walking out of the theater depressed. When it comes to movies like this, to where there's a giant mystery towards the beginning of the film and you have no idea what's going on, it ha the only time, I mean, even if 90, the first 95% of the movie is good, you're going to be disappointed if that last 5% doesn't pay off. I think it's safe to say that every moviegoer in the world would prefer to have a movie that starts out crappy and ends good, opposed to a movie that starts out great and ends bad. And in my opinion, this movie ended terribly. They did not have to make the decisions that you know they did. The only great thing about it is it did show the depths that people will go to to survive and protect the people that you love. But it's just the actual execution of this. I was like, okay, we have a few stupid characters in the mix. And me personally, I really just don't like, you know, stupid characters. There's many ways to the top of the mountain. And the objective is just to get there. But the way the director and this writing team chose to get there, I just found completely unnecessary. As I was walking to the parking lot thinking about it, I was like, okay, maybe this ending was inevitable. But at the same time, they did not have to end it the way they did. I mean, it was really a car wreck. I mean, just if you, I don't know if you've ever been in a car accident before, but you usually don't see it coming. You're just riding along and drawing yourself and then bam, something comes out of nowhere and you're just sitting there distraught wondering what the F is going on. That's exactly how I felt going, uh, leaving this movie and it really frustrated me. Since I just said that negative thing, I will say that one thing that this movie does remind me of is The Walking Dead. Uh, about 20 minutes into this, you will kind of see what I'm talking about. But, um, you know, this was an enjoyable film that had great characters, great direction, uh, a great score and soundtrack and uh, technical things that you know, I think the director did very well. But the ending really uh, lost it for me to the point to where I can't recommend it. If I had to rate this film out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 6.5 out of 10. Yes, a 6.5 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. I mean, have you seen It Comes at Night? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. Guys, I really need your help. I really want to go to the red carpet premiere of Black Panther that comes out February of 2018 next year. I Am Black, the movie comes out in Black History Month. I love comic books. I love Black Panther and I love Marvel, so it would just be a dream come true for me. Is it a likely chance I'll go? It's a long shot, I know, but I'm going for it. So help me out by sharing this video 1,000 times. And if you like this video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And if you don't like this video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why you didn't like it. And still, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide. You can go to my website, book market, and also look me up on social media. Yeah, look me up on social media. Go ahead and like my Facebook page too. A link to it is in the description box. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review for It Comes at Night. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.